And it means that I don't care what CBS, NBC, ABC, and the rest of them have to say about anything. What does the Bible say? That's all that matters because the Scripture is absolute truth. If you have your Bible, turn to the book of Galatians with me tonight, please. Galatians is a unique book. If you remember, the Apostle Paul confronted Peter on uh, yielding to the, to the uh, legalist, to the, uh, to the um, we'll say saved Jews, but they wanted to bring Judaism, portions of Judaism into the faith. And of course, uh, the Apostle Paul says in the book of Ephesians chapter number two, for by grace are you saved through faith, not of yourself gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. That's consistent throughout everything that he said. And so it doesn't allow for circumcision or baptism or anything else. By grace are you saved. What we have here in the book of Galatians chapter number six, someone who has fallen prey, Galatians six, they've fallen. Now, I want you to keep in mind tonight that Temple Baptist Church has a building. We're meeting in it tonight. And as folks are watching too, as it streams out, and I want the power of God in this church. Amen. Forget the numbers. That's meaningless. I want the power of God in here. And I want freedom for the Holy Spirit to move in our midst. And therefore, we don't want to quench or grieve the Holy Ghost of God. Amen. A lot of churches think that if they can get a big name preacher about every three or four months and hold a ritual revival, that they'll be okay. That's what they need. No, they don't. They need the Lord. And they need him every time they meet. And the Lord Jesus needs to be exalted in this house. Look what it says in Galatians 6.1. Brethren, if a man be a man, of course, that's a generic term in the sense that man or woman. If a man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such an one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. Bear ye one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. For if a man think himself to be something when he is nothing, he deceiveth himself. Father, bless this book now. Amen. You can be seated. The book of Galatians is a complement to the, uh, the book of 1 John. It has to do with fellowship. It has to do with walking with the Lord. What we're dealing with here in Galatians chapter number 6 is not some hardened sinner. Hardened. We're dealing with a brother or a sister that has had something overtake them. They yielded to temptation. And, uh, and because of that, they, they find themselves uh, out of fellowship with the Lord. And once, that, once you've ever been in fellowship with God, the most miserable person on this earth is a Christian that's out of fellowship with God. Amen. No question about it. And I want you to keep in mind, there's not a word in that Bible that says an angel can have fellowship with God, nor a cherubim, nor a seraphim, just the man. And the reason I keep pointing this out is because God made you for a reason far different from an angel. Amen. Or a cherubim or a seraphim. He made you for an entirely different reason. He has a manifestation he'll make to you. He'll show himself to you like he will not show himself to these other creatures. And this is what we're dealing with here in 1 John. But here in the book of Galatians, we're talking about a brother that has sinned. Now, when we read over there in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 5, a man had his father's wife. Do you remember what Paul said to do with that man? Turn him over to Satan, destruction of the flesh, right? Okay. When I compare that to what you're reading tonight, this is an entirely different situation. There's nothing here about turning someone over to the Satan, see? Compare it. There's nothing about that. What we have here tonight is res restoration. Now, there's an awful lot of people that like to get in your face and yell and scream, and that's easy for some of them to do. My, my dear friend, that's nothing. If you want to see spiritual power, find somebody that can help restore someone to the faith. That's a big deal because I never know what's liable to happen to me. I hope it never does by the grace of God, but I can't trust in myself to spend one minute in fellowship with God. It has to come from the Lord. Every bit of fellowship we have with God comes by the power of the Holy Spirit of God. So we have to watch these things. And there are definitely differences when it comes to, uh, to uh, the scale of sin, the repercussions of sin, uh, how, how, how bad it is. Uh, for example, when that man's the demon left that man, the Bible said he swept and garnished and all that, and the demon returned and brought seven other more wicked than himself. And this is what happens. You're dealing with a wicked world out there, folks. You should be able to come in here tonight to a house like this and have fellowship with each other. This gives you strength. 
And you should be able to come into the house of God like a little child, trusting. You know, not, not to, you know how people get, you get to where you, you don't trust anybody. You've been burned a few times, stabbed in the back, and that's what happens. But that's not the way it should be in the church. You should be like a little child, able to trust each other and bear one another's burdens. And if this really happens, you're going to find something in here you'll not find anywhere else on this earth. You can't. It won't be there unless it's another church that's in fellowship with the Lord. So this is what we want. And we want this on a daily basis. Not every three or four months of scheduled meetings. We want it every day. The church should live like that. You should live like that every day of your life. You should constantly have the Lord on your mind. You should be thinking about Him. Fellowship with Him. Talking to Him. Walking with Him. Because that's what He made you for. And there's nothing I know of that pleases God more than to have us that's made in His image seek Him out and want to walk with Him. Amen. I mean, He can spin stars and universes out and that means nothing to Him. It's that one soul. Scientists now are beginning to say, and of course I listen to them if they have anything to say, it's worthwhile. But some of these scientists are beginning to say now that, you know, there is a real possibility that there isn't anything else out there. <laughs> They're finally catching up with the Bible. Amen. There isn't anything else out there. The third heaven is not out there like you think it's out there. There has to be a door open for you to get into that third heaven. Yeah, right. Amen. That door has to open. And the Lord Jesus said, I open, no man closes. I close, no man opens. Do you know where you're going when you pass from this world? What if the Lord doesn't come back in a few years? I hope he does. I hope he comes before I'm finished tonight. I do, man. I'm serious as I can be. I hope he comes back. I'm getting so sick of looking at this perversion. I mean, I've had it. I've had it. I've had it. But uh, what do you do? We're stuck here until he comes. So we have fellowship. So what do you do when one of your brothers or your sisters begins to fall? Sometimes you can see it before it ever happens. You can see the spiritual deadness take hold of their life. That's the first sign, spiritual deadness. You can tell they haven't been praying. You can tell they're not in fellowship with the Lord. You can tell that they're just simply, uh, they're, they're living off of the world because that's the spirit now that, that, uh, that animates them, the world spirit. And when you see that, that's the beginning. That happens sometimes, quite a time, before they ever do anything before they fall into some sin. And this is what Paul's talking about here. He's talking about somebody that falls into it. Well, it all started when you didn't have any fellowship with God. Don't let the devil break your fellowship with the Lord. This is what he's talking about. Now here in Galatians, he wants you to restore. Now I'm going to tell you how you're growing in the Lord and how that your life begins to matter and how it means something is when you begin to sense from the Holy Ghost that you can help restore somebody. Help restore them. And one of the first qualifications of being able to restore somebody is the spirit of meekness. And how many of you folks have ever seen meek people? Meekness is a powerful thing. Moses was meek, the Bible says. And the Lord Jesus says, I am meek and lowly of heart. Meekness is, uh, you say, well, that's weakness. Oh, no, no, no. Meekness walks in a full understanding of who and what you are compared to the power of God, and you realize that you can't even take another breath without Him, and you begin to live like that. And you take seriously what the Lord said in John 15, without me you can do nothing. Nothing. And here the Apostle Paul says in the book of Galatians, we're nothing. And some people get offended when you say that to them. Say, well, you don't realize all I've accomplished for God. You haven't accomplished anything. You don't have anything except what He gave you. You really need to understand that. I'm, what, I take no credit for what, what I'm doing in here tonight. The Bible said take your, make your gifts and callings. Sure, I'm doing what God called me to do, but you do what God calls you to do. You say, well, he reward you greater. No, he won't. He makes no difference. If you are doing what God's called you to do, you're in the same level as anybody else. You're right up there with the big name preachers. If you're doing what God's called you to do, make your election and calling sure. Amen. Amen. I'm glad I've got a big name God instead of a big name preacher, ain't you? Yes, sir. So when somebody sins, you can ignore it. You can criticize him. You can withdraw from him. That's shunning him like uh, we were talking about the other day. You can shame him, censor him, dismiss him, 
isolate him, spread rumors about him. And that's easy to do now that you've got uh, Facebook and Instagram and I don't know what else, Snapchat and all the rest of it. I mean, you can send it out, boy, around the world. You can, uh, and some folks, I, I don't want to get off in that. That, bless your soul. Whew, they can't live without a, they can't live without that thing right in front of them. They say that it's gotten so bad that some homes, people are in those homes and they will no longer speak face to face with each other. They text each other and they're living in the same house. Lord help us. Don't you think there's something going on there? Spread rumors about him or slander him. Now these are all the things that get done and I'll tell you right now, they're constantly being done. Here's what the Lord said in 1 Corinthians 10. There hath no temptation taken you but such is common to man. God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you're able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that you may be able to bear it. 1 Corinthians 10, 13. Say, well, I'm not tempted. Oh, you're eat up with it. Just like we all are. If you can't be tempted, what do you think Satan's wearing you out? Are you joyful tonight? Are you shouting and praising God and glorifying the Lord in your heart? That joy unspeakable and full of glory, that's our heritage. But we don't have it all the time. We're just like Pharaoh. We want one more night with the frogs. He did. One more night with the frogs. You'd have thought Herod was ready. Uh, not Herod, but Pharaoh. You'd have thought Pharaoh was ready. But he, he, it took a long time to get him ready. And he was confessing how he'd sin. So when you restore such in one, what are you doing for that person? Well, first thing you have to do is do it like God does it. He's long-suffering to usward. He's long-suffering. He's patient with us. He's gentle with us. Amen. We haven't received according to what we deserve, have we? Every one of us in here, God's been good to us. A lot, he's been so good to us, sometimes you do something and think you got away with it. That's the truth. You think you got away with it. And, well, of course, he has his way of getting your attention later, but he has a reason for the way he does it. The Bible said the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow. Now watch this. And is a discerner of the thoughts and intent. You know what that word intent means? The motive of your heart. That's what it means. It means that the Bible reads the motive of your heart. Now let me tell you something. I'm not sure a lot of times I even know what my motive is. Do you know what your motive is? You don't know all the time. You don't know. <laughs> There's no way we can know. We have to put ourselves in the hands of God and say, Lord, you made me and you know a whole lot more about me than I know about myself. David said, search me and try me, O Lord, and see if there be any wicked way in me. This is David saying, Lord, you're the only one who can do it. I can't do it myself. We have a way of covering things up. We have a way of, uh, of, 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 of uh, you know, kind of sweeping it under the rug. You ever seen anybody sweep, sweep the floor and lift up the rug and sweep the... I saw that when I was a kid. Like I, the first time I ever saw that, I thought, what in the world? Yeah, she swept the house and then lifted a rug up and swept it under the rug. So when you hear somebody talking about sweeping it under the rug, that's fact. I've seen it happen. I also remember my grandmother. They were born in the 1800s. She made a difference between dirt and carn. I was at the grocery store today and bought a bunch of cleaning stuff. And, uh, and, the, and the girl that was checking me out, she said, well, you're going you're to be doing a lot of cleaning. I said, yes, ma'am, I sure am. Got a lot of cleaning to do. I says, my grandmother, told, my grandmother told me that there's a difference between dirt and carn. And she said, you better believe it. There is a difference. Do you know the difference between dirt and yarn? <laughs> uh, you say, well, there's no such word. Well, get on the Internet. I found it. You'd be surprised at how many words people use. It's filth of filth. It's dirt is one thing. You know, when something's been reduced to dirt, it's been reduced to a natural state. But yarn? So, you know, watch these people. <laughs> I can imagine tonight checking in the ticket. Yarn? That's what it is. <laughs> They never heard it in their life. <laughs> That's one of the benefits of being born 1946 and being raised by a grandfather who was born in 1878. 
There's a big, there's a lot of things I learned that a lot of people don't. My grandfather was born when Jesse James was still robbing banks. And that's who raised me. So imagine the environment that I came up in. So we restore such in one. You want to restore it? Don't. Is there anybody in this house tonight that you, that you don't want to see restored? I mean, I hope, you ho I hope no grudges are being held in here. I hope you don't hate each other. I hope you don't have spite for each other. I hope that when, according to the scripture, when you come into this house, you love each other. We love him because he first loved us. The Old Testament God command said, you shall love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and all thy soul and all thy might. The Lord Jesus says that's the greatest of all the commandments, that love factor. And it is. It's a great, great, great thing. If you have real love, you'll be no broken marriages. Real love, children will begin to obey. Real love will put power in your life. And real love will give you a reason for living. Real love will put value where value belongs. Real love is a powerful thing. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. I'll, ne I'll never forget lying in bed and have a 75, 78, 80-year-old man reach over and kiss me on the forehead. God bless your soul. Amen. Amen. Because I had been kicked out. And nobody wanted us. But he took us. Amen. I've been kicked out of a lot of things until 1973. And when I bowed my head and said, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Save my soul. He did. He did. And I can't explain to you tonight what that's like unless you've been through it yourself. I'm sadly sad. It's so sad. I mean, I'll speak from my heart to you tonight. I think on Sunday morning, there's an awful lot of people sitting in here that we're preaching to. They don't have a clue who Jesus Christ is. They're religious. They have cultural East Tennessee religion, but they don't know the Lord. I hope that's not you because he died for you and he'd save you tonight if you come to him. So the job of restoration a lot of folks don't want to gossip about it. Some folks have harsh judgment about it. They overreact, knee-jerk reaction, they call it. If something happens, let's say somebody in this church house, somebody in this church house gets caught in an affair, in an affair. That's a bad thing. That's a sexual sin. It's a bad thing. God, said, God condemns it time and time and time again. It's called adultery. But what do you do? What do you do? You just take them to the back door and kick them out and say, go find you a place. Or do you put your arm around their shoulder and say, well, you know, Satan got a hold of you. And what you did is wrong. But I'm your friend. And I love you. Amen. And I want to help you. Amen. Let's get back. Let's come back where it started. Let's come back to God. Let's get it right. And you, you, you don't know what that, what that could do. Do you know, folks, this world is full of people who do not believe that anybody cares if they live or die. Yeah. Amen. They don't care. And you know the truth of the matter is most of the people out there don't care. They don't care if you live or die. They don't care. The only, the only reason they have anything use for you is they, is they can get something from you or use you for something. Not the Lord Jesus. Come unto me all you that labor and heavy laden and learn of me. Take my yoke upon you for I'm meek and lowly of heart. You shall find rest for your souls. Jesus Christ is the greatest thing that will ever happen to anybody. Anybody, 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 anybody. He's never failed me. In the darkest hours, times of life. You remember when I prayed, I said to you the other day, I said, uh, I said uh, let me confess to you a fault. I've got a fault that I, need, that I have to confess to you. What, preacher? You mean tell me you're not perfect? Well, good night. I, you know, that's a... People say, I'm going to find me a perfect church. Well, good luck. <laughs> Keep looking. <laughs> Miss Fortunato, she's the lady of luck. See what she can find for you. No, we're sinners in here. We understand each other, if you really understand what I'm talking about. You don't condone anything. You turn to the one who can cleanse you, save you. He can clean the filthy, sinful carn <laughs> out of your life that rots and decays and drags you down because that's exactly what sin will do for you. Uh, the uh, Bible says in 1 John chapter number 1 and verse number 3, 
That which we have seen and heard declare we unto you, that ye also may have fellowship with us. And truly our fellowship was with the Father and with His Son, Jesus Christ. Why do you think it was so important for John to say that? Why was it so important? Because he knew how important it was. Yes, he knew how powerful it was. Fail not the assembling of yourselves together as the manner of some men. Even more so as you see the day approaching. Now look what it says in 1 John 1, 6 and 7. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. It didn't say it if we walk in sin. It says if we walk in darkness and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanseth us from all sin. Now, if weeks ago, I told you what that meant, my understanding of it, okay, by studying it, doing a word analysis of it. But guess what I found today? How many's ever heard of Kenneth Woost? All right, A.T. Robertson. Word pictures in the New Testament. All right. So who are these people? These people are, are what you would call Greek scholars, okay? And uh, Woost is uh, probably one of the best there is. Listen to what he says about that scripture and see if you've ever heard it before. Because today I read what he said, copied it down, and I'm going to read it for you tonight. Now it says, if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, cleanseth us from all sin. Mr. Woost, quote, while we are having this fellowship with him, the blood of Jesus, his Son, keeps constantly cleansing us from sins of omission, sins of ignorance, sins we know nothing about in our lives, and for the reason that we have not grown in grace enough to see that they are sin. These would prevent our fellowship with God if this divine provision of the constant cleansing away of the defilement of sin in our lives was not taken care of by the blood. See that? Of the Lord Jesus. So holy is the God with whom we have fellowship. You know what he said? He said that if you walk in fellowship with the Lord, you're going to sin. But while you're walking in fellowship with the Lord, the blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, is constantly, constantly cleansing you of that sin. And it doesn't make any difference whether you're conscious of the sin, even know what it is. It doesn't matter. The blood of Christ is going to cleanse you because he wants fellowship with you. And just a little technical, the, the word cleanseth is an aorist, active what that means is, aorist means a word in the past that is complete. All right? The act completes. But if it's active, it means something in the past that is complete that is constantly completing. Yeah. See what I mean? Yeah. So therefore, the, whatever the sin may be, it is finished, it's cleansed, you're never held accountable for it again, and then it continually cleanses and you're not held accountable for it because you're walking in fellowship with God. Hallelujah to God. Now I can walk with that. <laughs> I hope you got a hold of what I'm trying to say. Because I don't live a, uh, a uh, hypocritical, self-deceiving life. I know some people who think they're sinless. But I'm not. But I want a fellowship with the Lord. I want to talk with God. I want the power of God on my life. I want real love in my soul for people that I can't, that, uh, you know, that for, 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 the, for, for the earthly reason, that you don't really have any reason to love each other. But if you're born again, there's a Christian love there. And we help each other with that. I'll tell you right now, you ever let the power of God get turned loose in this house? And you start what I'm talking about, the fellowship we have one with another and with the Lord Jesus Christ. You will see people come here hungry for what you've got. They've had it up to here with religion, folks. They've been entertained to death. They've had every kind of, a, of an organized religion that you can possibly think of. But they haven't had the power of God. And the only way you can have the power of God is to walk in fellowship with the Lord Jesus Christ and with his Father, God the Father. Now I want that fellowship. Do you want that fellowship? He's only going to save you one time. You're not going to lose your salvation. If you could lose it, how'd you get it back? And I've never had one of them tell me yet, and they're good people, a lot of them are. I'm not trying to make fun of anybody tonight. 
and probably more dedicated than I am, but I'm going to tell you something right now. When a man says he loses his salvation, all right, when did you lose it? What sin did you commit to cause you to lose it? Now, wait a minute before you answer that. Wait a minute. Let's get off somewhere and let's start making a list up because whatever caused you to lose it would be what would cause him to lose it or this one to lose it, right? And on and on and on and on it goes. I'm so glad that I have been sealed with the Holy Spirit of God until the day of redemption. That's fellowship with each other. Bear one another's burdens. Don't nitpick each other. Tongue lash each other. You're never going to have fellowship like that. I remember a few years ago, somebody said, Preacher, said I was in a church Sunday and said, you wouldn't believe. He said, they were screaming at each other right there in the church during the service. They were so mad, so angry. And I think the issue was over power. You know, who's going to run this? Who's going to run that? This, that, this, that. And they were literally screaming at each other inside the house of God. And that's sad. Wouldn't it be wonderful to see somebody come in here and like you are in here tonight and you come down here to the front and your heart's broken and, you, and you're bearing a burden that you, there's no way you can bear it any longer and you get down here and somebody comes up on one side, somebody comes up on the other side, somebody comes up behind you. They lay their hands upon your shoulders. They get down there and take hold of you. You cry and they cry. You feel the power of the Holy Ghost, they feel the power of the Holy Spirit. They come together in the name of Jesus. That's where our power is. That's where it is. And I hope you have that tonight. That's what I want more than anything. The power of the Holy Spirit of God. Father, use what I've said tonight. Somehow or another, I've tried to get across this fellowship and this forgiving and this restoration. And restoration is not easy, Lord. It's not an easy thing, but it can be done by the power of the Holy Spirit of God. I pray this in Jesus' name. Your heads are still bowed tonight. I want to pray for you. Anybody in the house like me to pray for you tonight and say, Preacher, I want to get back in fellowship with the Lord where I ought to be. I mean, I, haven't, uh, I just don't have that joy in my heart. I don't have that power. I don't walk like that, like you're talking about. But I have. I've had it before, and I want it back. Anybody raise your hand? God bless you. God bless you. Hand here, hand there. Anybody else? God bless you over here. Hand over there. God bless you back there. God bless you here, here. Got hands going up everywhere tonight. Got hands going up everywhere. <coughs> Anybody else? Raise your hand tonight and say, Preacher, I want you to pray for me. God bless you back there. God bless you in the back back there. All right. Let's tell you what let's do. Once you come down here, I'm going to stand behind the pulpit. That way you can hear me. And I'm going to pray. And then if you all want to come down here in the altar and say, Lord, tonight is a new night. It's a new night. I'm starting afresh with you. I want fellowship with you. You may come down here tonight with a burden on your soul. It may be somebody you've been praying for. And you just want to come down here and join in with God's people and let them bear that burden as you bring it before the Lord. That's what we're here for. Isn't that what prayer meeting's about? So would you come down here? And I'm going to pray. I'm going to pray for everybody that comes down here. Let's come down here and talk to the Lord. We need him, folks. Boy, do we ever need God. My, we need him. My, 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 we need him. Let's talk to him. Let's talk to the good Lord. The Bible says the effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. My Father, I count it a privilege tonight, Lord. It's a privilege. You know me. You know where you found me. You know where you brought me from. If I looked back at that to qualify me to be up here tonight, I'd fail. Lord, you know that. There's nothing that qualifies me except the blood of Christ. The same that qualifies every soul in this house. We come to you because we need you, Lord. Lord, help us understand how much we need you. God, move in our soul and in our spirit and write it in our heart. Oh, Lord, not that, not that it is words anymore, but that it's written in our soul that we need you. We need you. We need you. And we know our enemy. We know how he'll put a wall up. He'll get our attention on something else. He'll use every form of trickery he can. We know the wiles of Satan. But we also know that he was made a show of openly. We know he was defeated at the cross. God stripped him of his power through the blood of Christ. And our Father, tonight I plead that blood. I plead it tonight on every soul that came down here. Oh God, 
oh God, before they walk out of this house tonight, may they know they've been in your presence. You can touch them. You can move in their heart, Lord. I can pray for them, but you can move in their heart. You can do something to help us, and you can help them. I want to see every, I want to see every soul in here helped. I want, to, I want to see everybody in this place get something good for their heart and their soul before they walk out of here tonight. I pray for that. I pray for it in Jesus' name. I pray that you'd help them, bless them, fill them with the Holy Ghost. God, make that fellowship sweet once again. For the joy of the Lord, for the singing of the songs of Zion, and get a hunger for the Word of God, for the things that are spiritual that have been neglected for so long. But tonight, they start afresh. They start anew. When David cried for the waters of Jerusalem, waters of Bethlehem, oh, he wanted to drink of the waters of Bethlehem. He had a good desire because those waters represent the Spirit. Lord, help us tonight. We want the waters of Bethlehem. We want, it, we want to go back where it all started and put it afresh, Lord. Bless them now. Bless them. Any need healing, I pray you'd heal them. Anybody in this house needs to be saved, I pray you'd save them. If anybody in the house tonight needs to be delivered, I pray you'd deliver them. We bring them all in Jesus' name. Bless his righteous, righteous, righteous name. Oh, God, I'm not worthy. Thank you for what you've done for me. You reached way down. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, God, in thy holy name, in Jesus' name, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Bless his holy, righteous name. Yes. 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 Amen. Amen. Fellowship. Hunger for the Lord now. Fellowship. God bless every one of you. I hope you get something good from the Lord.